I know you worked with Mike Shipley. I did. As his mix assistant, right? I did. So you yes. did like the whole Pro Tools thing? Because so does that mean you? I want to show this off because I don't get to show okay. it off often. So yep. this is like one of my prized possessions. Look at that. Boom. This is one of my favorite records ever. Signed. Me, Mike. Yeah, that's awesome. Me, Mike, and and Mutt mixed that record. Yeah. So, it was three months every day working full days, 16 hour days, whatever. Um, sorry, you're going to ask a question about it, but I could. Go yeah, on. I, no, just go on because. It's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we. we I'm sure I'm going to have a ton of follow up. That, that was the last thing I did with Mike Shipley. Mm. Um, before that, I had been working every day with him for two years in LA. When I first moved to LA, I, I hooked up with Mike. Mm. I, I just cold called him because I'd met him on the Shania tour and I had just moved to LA. I didn't have anything in place. I had no gig, a little bit worried, you know, just left Vancouver. Mm. And um, you have a visa where you're going to get, where you're going to get. I did. And that's why I moved down was because I had a green card and I had to, I had to move to the States or they take yeah. it away from you. So I headed to LA I called Mike Shipley and I said, Hey, Mike, I'm in town. Um, I'd love to, do you need any, any pro tools work or anything like that? I'd love to help you out. He said, no. Um, and then 30 minutes later, he called me back. Hey, uh, could you be here in 10 minutes? Um, I'm, Perfect. I'm setting up an Aerosmith recall and, uh, I'd love you to set it up on pro tools. So, uh, that was the start of me working with him every day for two years. Fast wow. forward to the up record. And we both flew out to Switzerland and mixed that record for three months. There's 18 songs on that album, as you probably know. Yeah. And they're, they were done in three different ways, right? The, the country, the pop, and the world version. We yeah. didn't do the world version that, that was passed on to. Yeah, some the other world guys. version's terrible. It, 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 we, should just, we should just forget about it. <laughs> there's some magic moments in it, but yes. yeah, there's some stuff that didn't work. There is. There's some like, cool uh, parts, but you know. Jealous. The jealous. Check out Shania's yeah. Jealous. That is so like moving. It almost brings a tear to your eye. Yeah, the and it's weird because a lot of that stuff is actually live musicians too. Yes. The, on the yeah, version. those those world musicians, they did all the beats and stuff, but they flew to India and actually had like sitar yeah. and tablas and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, so it's it's really legit. But they took the vocal that was already been recorded. They didn't re-record you know, no, for it for a vocal. Yeah. And they just built this new Indian sort of sounding track around it. It's very, you know, it was it's, a very big endeavor. It's and kind it, of funny to listen to that mix because it's like, you know, you listen to something like, I'm not in the mood. And it's like, you just hear Brenda and you hear Mutt. Yeah. Like, I'm not to say. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? This is so weird. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, your, your brother was the main engineer on the record, but you were in the mix, you know, really kind yeah. of dissecting everything. So, right. do you talk about the drums on this album? Because I, I think that this record really was a turning point for con for modern country music. Because, right. you know, I mean, drums up to that point were, you know, kind of just Nashville -y, cut off the floor. And then mm -hmm. up comes around, it's these big ass programmed drums that sound like a, a first of all, it sounds like a performance, but yeah. the tone of the drums are just so incredible. The snare, the kick, specifically the yeah. toms. Like, talk about the sounds of those, like, the sounds of the album. Because, All right, you know, what, what can you, what can you tell me? So about? You're talking about the up record, right? Yeah, the up record. Okay. Like, what can you? Um, so about? they are they are programmed drums. Yeah. Uh, but you know, all the samples that we used in the mix process were all from Mike's catalog mm -hmm. that he had done over the years. So they're actually real, you know, yeah, sounds that he had recorded over the years. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure the process of how Kevin programmed those drums. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd, he'd be able to tell you better. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, back then they didn't have a lot of the soft synth drum. Yeah. So, like, so probably just placing them on the grid, you know. Well, that's it. I was going to say. And when then adding hi-hats and, and then maybe adding a loop to make it sound a little more real or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would take, you know, whatever Kevin programmed and add our own treatments to those drums. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and we were running through an SSL console and then I was doing a lot of the processing and in, in pro tools as, you know, as we went live, Yeah, uh, there was, you know, a little bit of outboard gear, but very, very little. So it was, it was mostly, mostly in the box, mostly in the box. 
and uh and we would just work on the on the mixes you know we do the the country version and then we do the pop version yeah um and it it's was like a long process when it comes to mixing the drums and stuff are you are you, you know because there's so many stories about mud and even mike shifley's talked about it where they would you know automate fades and like decays on snares and all these things like when you're yeah. mixing this stuff are you going in and meticulously like okay if that snare hit is kind of burying the vocal here well maybe we'll de you know automate the snare here we'll you know maybe the the decay will be a little bit less or we'll pull the yes. reverb back or like yes how there, nothing got by so if there's one of the biggest things i learned from mud is not being on time as although i learned that as well but but as much as releases how you come off of notes can mm -hmm. interrupt the groove right if you hold a note too short if it goes too long whatever and the snare was a big part of that so you know if you have a do ka do ka that ka had to stop when the do hit so when the kick comes down that sample has stopped and the tail of that reverb has stopped it doesn't right. Right, because that makes it more punchy. Right, if you yeah. have all this goo hanging over when that kick comes, mm -hmm. then it's fighting for for space in the mix. Right, so if that reverb stops and that kick sounds punchier, that makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love the tom sound on the record. I've never heard toms like it, and I've not <laughs> heard toms since. So, what do you you're, know? You're about gonna those laugh toms? when I tell you what it is. Yes, please, because I I, I I need those toms in my life. They're they're just Simmons samples. Remember Simmons drums from course, the 80s? Yeah. That's what there's, it is. There's such an attack to them. It's got well, like Well, you know, like, we layered in some other stuff to it, but it's mostly it's it's mostly the attack from the Simmons. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then so, No, they're it, epic, right? Dude, they're incredible. Yeah. Like you listen to the the beginning of um Thank You Baby that like do do or even the uh, like in She's Not Just a Pretty Face the do 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 like it's yeah. so punchy and <laughs> they they have attack and they have depth to them it's it's such a bizarre sound that nobody else gets and nobody else yeah. has it you know so yeah, those yeah. are just Simmons attacks so would you layer in like organic toms with it too or um I can't really remember you know we probably did or it probably was already done by kevin ahead of time yeah um but the majority of that sound was the simmons sample wow so if anybody remembers those electric drums in the 80s that were octagonal shaped yeah those are simmons you know the platinum blonde uh <laughs> what is it it doesn't really matter do 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 right that's well, there were so many of those those drum machines. I mean, you had the Lindrum, you had the Simmons. Yes, and... exactly. They were just, you know, one took over when I, the other... I get really nerdy and ask if it was an SD5 or an SD7, Tom. I wonder which one. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't be able to tell you. I, I don't yeah. know. Do you, do you know anything? <laughs> well, you, so you did a you did one of the solos. You're credited as playing the solo on C'est La Vie. Yes. Is that, is that all you played on the record? Or did you do any other, like, kind of overdubs that were needed in the mix? That that is all i played and and it's a funny story how i even played that yeah. because while we were mixing the album they were still doing guitar solo overdubs they mm. had michael tops thompson fly in and he was working with kevin in the other room and we were in the mix room mm. and so um uh what were we talking about again oh the, uh, the solo the solo right and um so i'm playing uh we're, we're mixing c'est Mm -hmm. And Mike Thompson had, had had already gone home, right? And we realized, wait a minute, there's no guitar solo on this song. What are we going to do? Um, and Mud had already gone home for the night. And we were just backing up stuff, setting up the next mix, mm -hmm. uh, Kevin and my brother, or Kev Kevin and myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, we should do a guitar solo. There's no guitar solo here. So when Mutt came in the next day, we said, you know, Michael forgot to do a guitar solo on C'est La Vie, uh, but we did it last night and here it is. So we played it for him and he's like, you know, he had that same stare like, and he's like, take the last half and put it on the first half in front of the first half so that the first half is second. <laughs> and so, you know, we just chopped it and yeah. basically put it there and 
the last note wasn't long enough. He goes, now stretch that last note. And so we, you know, stretched it digitally. So you went into the grid and you kind of just pulled it? Yes, wow. exactly. Um, a lot longer than I think we should have. <laughs> you know, where I was, because he's like, no, it has to be a little bit longer. Um, and then he goes, not a totally wasted effort. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that was, you know, and that was, that was a good compliment, you know, from Mud. Yeah. So, and that, that's what it ended up, you know, and, uh, it what was, was a slide guitar solo, which was cool. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Like it's so good. Like it's yeah. so tasty, you know. So that it's Thanks. funny that it was just like a flash in the pan kind of thing. We're like, we need a solo. Let's cut yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. So that's how I ended up on on the the album. Yeah. I think you're the first person I've talked to this played on a Shania Twain record. So this is kind of cool. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a monumentous occasion. Yes, Do you, uh, absolutely. Do you remember what the uh, the guitar tones on that record are just so incredible um do you remember what the amps were or you know what did you record that solo through was it an amp was that it all solo i recorded through a line six pod i fucking knew it i knew you were gonna say it was a pod and i'm yep. kind of upset <laughs> <laughs> um he had a pod there and it was the quickest way just to plug in if yeah. you say that the like all the guitars are done through a pod that'll be like they are not done through a pod Okay, thank God. But they're not done through an app. Okay. And I'm trying to think what it was. It was a Roland, a roll, the Roland V80 or something like that, mm. which is basically their version of the pod at the time. Mm. Uh, Mutt could hear some kind of artifacting in the pod that he said he didn't like. You know, oh, obviously it's gotten way better these days, but. Um, well, yeah. There was something in the Roland that he liked better. And, you know, all that down, down, do, 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 at the start yeah. of, uh, yeah. It almost sounds like a Rockman. Yes. So that, that was that, that box, whatever it was, the Roland unit. The Roland, what is it? Is it a V80? You have to check it. I, I could be wrong, but it's, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. The, uh, whatever the... it was, was big in 2002 or whenever it was. I'm gonna have to look that up. Wow! So if that was the main guitar, it can. That's nuts. Yeah, that, that should have been on the oh. ad for that unit. That was the stuff that Mutt played. Sorry. Okay. I told you that Michael Thompson actually played. He brought his full rack, so full all that rack. stuff was was an amp. Okay. And yeah. all his effects. He had a huge rack and a huge pedal board. You know, he came with everything. Yeah. So yeah, he definitely had his own thing. I'm trying to think what amp he was using it was like a matchless or i don't remember but yeah he uses a lot of rack stuff and like pedals yes. i was just watching a video of michael thompson recently and he was showing off a compressor or something but his main clean tone is like him going into a compressor into i think like uh i think he's still using an eventide like h3000 into yeah. like like a pcm 70 or like it's super super classic yeah that's that's the kind of stuff he had in his rack Wow. So, so all that stuff where you hear the, you know, the the slash kind of effects and whatnot, that's all him, of course. And the solos are all him. Yeah. So the main rhythm parts, it, it was pretty much all Mutt that played them, like the basic tracks. Right. Wow. Yeah. If, if you thought something sounded like a pod or whatever, that was usually Mutt playing that. Wow. It's interesting. He's a great player, actually, you know. Well, you know, actually, I was reading some of Michael Thompson, and he said that Mutt secretly plays a lot of the rhythm parts and doesn't take credit for it. That's and that's exactly right. It's that's really cool. The guitar tone on "She's Not Just a Pretty Face" is a guitar tone that I've never heard before. So I'm wondering where is that? The one that went what do what do what do what do that thing that, or that's cool. But the actual like the oh right like the main lick yeah. So, so I'm pretty sure that would be Michael playing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Do you know where? Do you know where that intro, like, bow, 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 you know where that came from? I don't know where they got that from. No. no. Damn. So when you're doing the mix, like you're getting all these tracks and everything's isolated. It's like, do you do you sit there and you listen to Mutt's backing vocals and are you like automating EQs and syllables yes. and every single yes. thing? And... Yes. Getting rid of all the S's, you know, because there's no need for any background vocals to have S's, right? Yeah. Because it just interferes with the all the S's that accumulate, um, and, and, you know, with the lead vocal, right? As long yeah. as the lead vocal is doing it, then you know what, what they're saying. Mm. Um, 
because you know from a mixing standpoint and, and it's gotten a lot easier now but you get so many stacked vocals and they're all going at the same time it's like yeah. wow it sounds like yeah it's, it sounds like nails on a chalk yeah so we would we would eq like on the lead vocal every every syllable right every you probably heard syllable. me talk about that before well, I, I was watching something with Mike Shipley, and he was saying even back in the day on the Def Leppard stuff, they'd sit there with a graphic EQ and syllable yeah. to syllable, they'd kind of pull and dip things out. Right. When you're mixing Mutt's backing vocals, what, what kind of processing is going on? Is it just like EQ and some compression? Like, is there like other effects on it? Because, you know, that's such an iconic sound, and obviously his voice is a big Every part of it. Everybody thinks there's some kind of magical, like, is he whispering for half this tracks? You know, right? It's just the way his voice sounds. Hey, you know, he's got that air on top. When I mean, we do, yeah. you know, 12, 24 tracks of that, then it, it just embellishes all those cool things. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, not that I've ever seen have there been any secret sauce for, you know, that sound. Yeah. It's just yeah. a, it's the throat shape and you know the air that's coming out. Well, I straight up asked Phil Collin. I was like uh, from Def Leppard. I was like, you know, on a lot of those hysteria stuff, you listen to Love Bites, the Love Bites, and all that. I'm like, did you record that at a lower pitch and then you put on a harmonizer and pitched it up? He's like, nope, it was all Mutt. He sang it straight up. It's yeah. all him. And I I learned how to sing high from list from trying to emulate him so many times over the course of the Shania tours, you know? And, uh, and I just, you know, cause I could solo his parts, right? Yeah. I could, I didn't, I didn't hear it as a whole. I could just hear that one voice. And, um, you know, I call it the pinch. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like when you, you know, when you have a balloon and you pull it and it goes, Wee! right. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. that's kind of what I've learned how he gets those high notes. It's like a pinch. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I'm gonna have to try that. It's not falsetto, you know, cause that would sound very operatic and right. And Fred, Freddie Mercury or even the darkness, you know, that's all like falsetto. Mm -hmm. It's like in a, it's like razor you know, blades in the throat kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's just closing it off, closing off, like pulling a balloon when letting the air out. Yeah. Wow. It's nuts. Yeah, he sings so high. It's amazing. His, you know, and then all the two-part stuff he did with Shania, where he's singing like country style. You know, he yeah. just he emulates whatever it needs to be done for the the track. Well, somebody uh, posted an instrumental version of uh, "Any Man of Mine" on YouTube, and I was listening to it, and it was actually isolated tracks. So you had like Mutt and his backing vocals with like some like fill extra parts, and it's so interesting to hear how he sounds so like "Any Man of Mine," and then he had like the. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think planets have? Like it's so different, but it's the same guy. It's it's bizarre. Yeah, I gotta say, Jeremy, your your attention to detail on this the out of I'm out of here cover oh. that you did, <laughs> right? And all the inflections in the melody, mm -hmm. you're spot on. Like you can tell that you've totally listened to this so many times that it can't be any other way you know what that that's your live arrangement so that's that was a live arrangement i got dude elijah wood put up um i think it was like an like a monitor mix or something up on youtube and it was up for like a week and then it was like gone but i was able to pirate it beforehand okay i was, I was listening to that because it sounded so good like it sounded like what a live record should sound like and i was like man like i wonder if this is their in-ear mix or if this is a board tape or did you mix it? I mixed it. Well, I I don't know if it's that particular one, but but the ones that are up now, yeah, I, I mixed for a no, lot. This yeah. one was from like it was the 2015 tour, and it had, uh, yeah, it it, okay. was, it sounded massive. So I was listening to that, and I loved like the drum breakdown in the middle, and like the bass. Derek was playing the right. bass part a little different from the record. It had like the slides right. at the room. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, just just the fact that you recognize that we, that he's different on that i mean it, you can tell you're, you're the real deal you know like even Dude. when you did like uh the breakdown and you went oh if you're not in it for you got it you gotta you have know? it yeah right <laughs> nobody would ever do that but you did it and yeah, that's what yeah. she did yeah so kudos to you for for doing a bang-up job on that Let me, uh, <laughs> and even I... your mutton your mutton impersonation was amazing just now 
Oh, the any man of mine. Yeah, that's <laughs> but it's it's hilarious because I I was talking to Brian Adams about the uh, the backing vocals and he was telling okay. me how they did all that, and he was the one that kind of made me realize he's like he he can sing in so many different ways and it actually makes you sort of think about how you can utilize your voice, right. and you know the way it's it, true as as performers. I mean, that's really what you're doing at the end of the day. You're you're kind of putting on a performance. So. Yes. Exactly. Get the most out of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, there was a uh, there was something I found in my uh, in my Pro Tools. It was kind of funny. I'll play this for you, super okay. super fast. <laughs> it was me trying to recreate because I'm working on my own like album right now, and I'm trying to get like those up drum sounds and like guitar tones and stuff. And so I was nice. just kind of fooling around with this. And here, here, check this out. That's you? Yeah. That's so it. the other thing I said to my wife yesterday as I was listening to it, I'm like, his timbre is a lot like Shania's. Mm. Well, I like I, like you yeah. playing that over your mic. That sounded really, really close. Yeah. So what was your process for doing that? Well, the backing vocals, it was uh, just basically me doing the I'm gonna get you and then doing the high part yeah. and everything. But the, the main back, that vocal track there was like, a, that was just like a guide vocal because I shot okay. up my voice doing the backing vocals. Wait, hold on. I, Unbelievable. I, I took a video of the backing vocals. Maybe you can hear. So, but I isolated it here. Right here. Hold on. Great take. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> so it's then together. All together in the mix. I'm gonna get you. But it's it's the way that you know you sing those parts, and that's why you guys pull it off live so well because it has you you sing that I'm gonna get you. It it's not get you. It's like uh, I'm gonna well, get you. There's a good example of the DSing that we would do manually. Mm. And and also the way that he would sing it, he would try not to embellish those chas, right? So it wasn't a cha fest because it's I'm gonna get you, cha, it's a matter. I'm gonna get you, cha, don't you? You know, there's a lot of chas in there, right? Right. So we would dock a lot of those so they wouldn't stick out so much and you know mm. be offensive. You don't notice as much, you know, those sticking out unless you crank it, right? Which most people, you want them to crank it in their car, in the bar, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, and those kind of things are like ear darts if if they're not, you know. Yeah, just kind of stamped out. Yeah. So it it sounds like you know you're you're doing what we automated with your voice, and we would have to sing it like that. You know, we'd have to try yeah. not to sing the chuz so That's much. Interesting, you say that. So. In reality, he probably did sing it straight, and then, like you said, you automated it out. But now I'm trying to recreate it. I'm just exactly. right here. Yeah. So exactly. Interesting. Interesting. I'm gonna get you. Yeah. Right. It's a matter, not ch it's a matter, because that's that's what you would do, right? Right. Yeah. That's yeah. so funny. That's that's how I learned to that's how I learned to play guitar and like just uh, learn to sing because I would sing be in my car and be singing the backing vocals and like air guitar. I could mime the entire show for you. <laughs> like you that's know? amazing. Yeah. Wow. So so is is the up record your favorite then? It probably is just because of um I mean, obviously, every you know, come on over is the biggest, but it's like yeah. for me, it, it really is the sound of the album. And mm -hmm. I was born in '94, so when I was like peak, you know, mid late elementary school, like that's when Up came out, and I was really yeah. getting into music, and I listened to it over and over and over again on my on my Sony CD player. It was that, and I had Van Halen and uh, you know Def Leppard, and but for me, this it really was the sound of it, like the sound of the record. It was just so. A program director of mine used this word, and I'll never forget this. He used the word pleasurable. It mm. needs to sound pleasurable. And it everything, it just sounds so pleasurable, you know? Yeah. And even the songs and... And that's why we, we EQ'd every single syllable, because uh, we wanted it to be not offensive in any way. If you were to crank it, 
And because we could, I think it was an experiment for Mud as well to, because he could, you know, Pro Tools allowed you to automate. We could just take one word, like forgive. Yeah. And we just four, 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 four. You find out what the offending frequency of four is. And it might not be the same frequency that give, you know, so, and then we'd go give, 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 give. And, and well, you would sit there like with your mouse, like in the EQ and you'd, you'd find the frequency and, and we'd sweep out. that, we'd sweep that frequency until we heard where the, you know, the distortion happened hmm. and we go, okay, that's, you know, Mutt would say that's the bad boy. And then we'd pull it down. But the problem was it would take a whole day just to do this treatment for right. the lead vocal. Right. So that's when we got Nigel Green to fly out to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And then he was in another room uh, doing all the, all that EQing for us. And then he would just hand it over and we'd put it in our mix, you know? Wow. But we did the first few on our own and we realized we're not gonna get done in time. So we, we got to get some help. So you had a mixer for the mixer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Talk yeah. about having a budget. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's nuts. I, yep. wonder if, uh, I wonder if they're ever going to put out like a deluxe edition of this, you know, throw in some instrumentals in there for like the diehards that, you know, just love the music or, you know, some some bonus. I wonder if there's any Shania Mutt demos out there because I, I actually I asked her that I interviewed her maybe like geez, like four years ago now. And it was the best day ever and also worst day ever because it was me and like three other journalists like in a junket kind of thing. And right. the newspaper reporter was like, so tell me about living in Switzerland and like, <laughs> oh, raising your son. And I'm just like, oh, God, like all this lifestyle shit. And I wanted to talk about the music, right? I've never been asked this stuff before, so this is refreshing. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah, yeah I asked her straight up. I was like you know, is there any demos sitting around? And she's like, well, there is, but there isn't because when we'd start a song, it was just start to finish, mm -hmm. you know? So it'd be interesting to see when they put it out, if, if they end up putting out like a deluxe edition of this or something, even to find like instrumentals online of Shania stuff. There's no official instrumentals out there. Like everything's just yeah. so under lock and key, you know? Well, I know that Kevin did a lot of, starting going down a road then stopping and going down a different road mm. whether it was a different tempo or a different key or whatever there was a lot of back and forth just to find that perfect um place to okay this is the song you know yeah but i was recently brought up the multi-tracks for you're still the one mm. and there are extra vocal parts on that song that no one knows or has heard of mutt really? singing yeah, and they're really good. And so, you know, I, it was it was just a matter of is having them too much or should we have these instead? Are they better than what we have already? I'm sure that was all like taken into consideration, but there there are other mutt parts in the chorus that are really cool. But is it like so what are, what is he singing? Is it cuz the main folk chorus part is these still other, yeah other than that like is he going right off her? so he's singing with her you know still the one i run to okay one that i belong you know that kind of stuff wow. still the one i want for life that That's kind of stuff cool. yeah and then there's another part i can't remember uh exactly how it went but is there a is there any others like that where you've pulled up a session and you're like oh my god why didn't they put this in well, in um, um, you can reveal all of this, by the way. The NDA is expired. <laughs> it hasn't, not for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably get in trouble for all of this. Actually, <laughs> um, there there were other parts in um, trying to think of the name of the song, the Brad Pitt uh, song. Oh, uh, uh, don't impress don't, me. Don't impress me. Yeah, there were other names for. Brad Pitt. And really? Yeah, those are those are on the multi tracks as well. <laughs> no way. Yeah. It, wow. You know, if they didn't use Brad Pitt, the the right history and the trajectory, yeah. it would just it would. Yeah. Who knows what would happen? Right. What other what other names are on that tape? Uh, well, one that I thought they sh she should have kept because I'm a big Star Wars fan. She said, "Who who, who do you think you are, Luke Skywalker?" <laughs> oh my god that would have been amazing right 
You yeah. know what? Next year for May the fourth, she should just release that clip on like TikTok or Instagram or something. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think you can hear on one of the mixes of the a single mix of the song, uh, Captain, Captain Kirk. Kirk. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. Uh, Batman. I don't know if that I've heard that one as well. Never heard that one. Yeah. Wow. Amazing, right? That'd be. Imagine she yeah, said, but I, I I haven't really heard any demos or that uh you know from those days yeah of other songs hmm. i think i think it's because every idea was worth exploring mm. and if it was worth exploring then you you finish it you know right if it if it's a so there's no bad songs right because mm -hmm. if it was bad then you just fix it make it better you know right no that makes that makes total sense to me and I mean, Phil Collins said to me that there wasn't really any Def Leppard demos because they would just start the song and that would be yeah. the song. And, you know, they right. did all the drums last because if they wanted to change the chorus or something, they didn't want to be tied down to a drum track or, you know, it's it's an interesting way to work. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. So what's going on with you guys? Like, is the residency going to kick back in at some point or uh, is it kind of like, eh? <sighs> Please, God. Yeah, hope so. I haven't heard any word on it though, but you know, things are a lot better down here than they are up there. We oh, yeah. we went through our bad phase and now we're starting to get back to, to normal. A lot of shows are opening up here. I don't know about our show. I haven't heard any word about it, but uh, you know, it'd be really nice to, to start before the end of the year. Yeah. Talk to me just really quickly about the decision to kind of scale back the band and make it more of a show. Because, like I said, you know, growing up, I I always expected. When I went to see Shania Twain, I was like, I want to see her, the big band, playing the big, you know, making it sound like an arena, like the record. Now you go yeah. see her and it's, you know, the, you got the backup dancers, you got the skilled back yeah. band. You know, yeah. was that a decision just to go in a different direction and kind of modern? Is it a modernization thing or? Um, well, the first time we ever had dancers was the, the first Vegas residency, right? Yeah, and it was still a big and, band at that point. Yeah, and, and that's pretty obvious, you know, because Vegas has dancers, right? Yeah. But she also used them in on the subsequent tour after that. Right. Um, and on that tour, you had, like, the most bare-bones band ever. It's like... Yeah, so I think, you know, it, it. I don't know why, but, I mean, I can assume it's because... It's more of a show then, right? It's more visual. Yeah. Um, people don't care if there's a huge band that are all dressed in black standing by, you know, back by the curtain. Yeah. They want to see a show. So but I thought that was always the cool thing about Shania because the yeah. band, you know, you'd watch that up in Chicago DVD and all the band, like they had their own personalities. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. everybody's over there and over here walking around and as opposed to Bon Jovi, where it's just like a glorified wedding band at this point, everybody just kind of chilling at the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always thought that was such a cool thing. Like, it seems like it's everyone's having so much fun. So, yeah. With yeah. The, I mean, I don't know. I, um, maybe he has something to do with Mutt because Mutt was more the rocker. Okay. Could be. Right. And so, Mutt, you know, and, you know, back in those days, we were coming off of, you know, the, uh, all the, the rocks, big production, yeah. you know, and country kind of took over where glam rock left off and, you know, grunge kind of did its own thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So country music with Garth and Shania became sort of for those people that missed that. And so it was the, that big production and the big rock band with the big light show. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, my went away and, and, and I know, you know, Shania loves to dance. Yeah. So she wanted to do some dance stuff in her show and why not, you know, change things up, you know, reinvent. Change, yeah, exactly. It. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. It's uh, who makes more money, the musicians or the dancers? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I gotta get back to Vegas and check out that show. I was supposed to go on my yeah. birthday last year, last last summer. That you guys were playing on my birthday weekend, and I was planning to go down and everything. And oh it, wow, everything was shut down. It didn't happen. So I know we we you know we worked so hard in this new residency, and then we we only did like a handful of shows before we shut things down. Yeah. So we're all anxious to get back on the stage and I hope people come and support the show and, and I hope they're missing live music as much as we're missing, you know, performing. 